My name is Jason Ellis. I'm a district forester with the Texas A&M Forest Service in Jacksonville, Texas. Uh, I am a, a 2000 graduate from Stephen F. Austin State University where I received a, a bachelor's in forestry. forestry. So where we're standing, uh, this is forage area two for the red cockaded woodpecker. Um, we, we have one of the westernmost populations of RCW, red cockaded woodpecker. Um, in the United States, it's actually on this forest. And a big reason why we have RCW is because we have a lot of older, over mature short leaf trees. Um, short leaf tends to get red heart fungus, which uh, makes it easier for the, the woodpecker to uh, create their cavity. Um, the woodpecker is a very picky, picky bird. Um, it likes a open, very open, over mature area like this. Um, with minimal mid-story or understory. Um, and so uh, to achieve this savanna, almost savanna-like look that we have here, um, we, we've used prescription burning. Um, we've actually used a mulching machine to, to first knock down a lot of the, the brush that was, that was too tall to, to get with fire. Um, and then we've used herbicide application after the mulching and then uh, this was burned in March of last year, let's say the first week of March uh, of last year. Um, and so our next burn we'll probably try and push into uh, a little further uh, further into March. Um, the short leaf pine here we're, we're managing obviously for, for the red cockade woodpecker, but we're also managing short leaf pine um, for aesthetics, uh, but also because we're losing short leaf unfortunately throughout the United States. Um, Shortleaf used to have the largest range of the four southern yellow pines, and unfortunately, we're losing it due to lack of fire, um, urbanization. Uh, really, for the past few decades, uh, we've been clear cutting a lot of timber and going back and replanting with loblolly pine. Um, so, so there's a push to uh, to conserve shortleaf pine, much like there is uh, a push for longleaf pine conservation as well. And um, that's what we're trying to do on this forest is is conserve. Uh, our short leaf pine resource. So this is a cavity tree that the red cockade woodpecker uh, lives in. You can see the green band around it. That's how we designate these trees. Um, we're actually in the, the breeding season period for the bird right now. Um, you can see the uh, the holes that are in the tree where the sap tends to run down, that keeps predators like snakes from, from getting up into the RCW's cavity. Um, if you look at that, that's a shortleaf pine. One of, the, uh, one of the neat things about shortleaf pine is it has an, a narrower crown than a loblolly. Um, obviously it has shorter, shorter needles. So that allows more sunlight to the ground. More sunlight to the ground means more forbs, grasses, herbs, things that you see like right here. Um, so it's really great for wildlife habitat. Um, <clears throat> another adaptation for shortleaf pine, because it has the shorter needles, it's less susceptible to damage from snow and ice as opposed to like loblolly or, or longleaf or slash, um, which have the longer needles and, and tend to hold more uh, ice and, and snow on them. So I'm going to stand that um, we planted with shortleaf containerized seedlings in 2018 and here January of this year, 2020, uh, we did a prescription burn and um, some of the trees, some of the shortleaf pine trees that you see like this one here were top killed. But one of the neat things about shortleaf is that it has a bud down here at the bottom and it actually has a little crook. And it kind of hides that bud and um, so when you have a fire or disturbance it'll sprout back and you can walk through this stand and just about every tree that you see that we that did get a little bit too hot that we top killed um, they're sprouting back like crazy here at the base so um, again short leaf is very fire adapted um, and again one of the reasons why we don't have short leaf as much is because we don't have near as much fire as we used to so um, we're, part of the reason that we did the prescription burn in the first place was, was one, to, to kind of see this cool, cool effect. Um, this forest is, is a research 
uh, for us. Um, but also another reason is to, uh, if you look at the understory here, there's just a, a lot of different grasses, different forbs um, growing in this area. So this is a very, again, wildlife friendly spot. Um, we'll let these guys grow up for a few more years and, and probably be back in, you know, I'd say year five or six and, and do another prescription burn in the stand. So one of the other reasons that we decided to do this burn early on in, in this stand's life at age two was we've got these mature loblolly pine trees in the back there, right? And so, you know, mature loblolly pine trees, they're going to keep throwing seed, loblolly seed in this stand. And we want to keep this primarily a short leaf stand. So in burning early on, all those little loblolly uh, seedlings that were starting to develop, they're not going to come back like the short leaf is. Um, so again, in a few years, I imagine we'll still have some more loblolly seedlings coming in and uh, we'll take care of those with fire. So this site here was uh, originally an overmature, kind of mixed loblolly and shortleaf pine forest. And we did a shelterwood harvest here. So in essence, we left about roughly 18 to 20 uh, shortleaf trees that, that had good comb production to, to enhance the natural regeneration. And one of the issues that we had when we were walking through this stand and marking our our leaf trees or our seed trees for the shelter wood, um, you would look up at a tree and it may have short needles like a short leaf should, but it, the cones may look like they were loblolly uh, or, or vice versa. Sometimes you'd see longer needles, but the cones you could swear they were short leaf. So it got kind of difficult. Um, we do have hybridization where short leaf and, and loblolly hybridize together. Uh, and that's again, that's another reason why we're losing short leaf um, because it's hybridizing with with loblolly. So uh, we we put the shelter wood in place. We had awesome regeneration. Um, these trees, when they were all about this about this tall, um, you had short leaf, you had loblolly, and you had again a mix of loblolly and, and short leaf. Just trees that you that had the traits, uh, physical traits of, of both species. Um, so. We let the trees grow up a little bit, and um, we had way too many trees per acre, you know, over a thousand trees per acre out here, um, which is not good for, for timber and, and forest management, obviously. So uh, about, it's going on two years ago, we had a crew come in and do a pre-commercial thinning. Um, these guys were given machetes, and they cut back trees like these right here that you see. Um, the goal was to create more spacing among our leaf trees, like you see in here. Um, roughly leaving about six to seven hundred trees per acre was what we wanted to do. Um, the next thing we want to do in this stand is burn it. We want to try and get a really good, nice, cool uh, winter burn in here. Um, and at some point, we'll eventually start trying to go after some of this, some of this hardwood. We may use some herbicide uh, application to do that. So this is a almost eight-year-old shortleaf pine plantation that, that we planted. Um, it took us a few tries to even get this established. We planted it in 2010, and even though the trees were treated, uh, bare root seedlings, um, Paley's weevil took, out, took them out. So we tried again in 2011. In 2011, we had probably the worst drought on record in the state of Texas. Took those trees out. So we ended up planting these in December of two, 2012. Um, November 2018, when the trees were almost six years old, we did a prescribed burn in here. Um, you typically don't do prescription burning in like a loblolly pine plantation um, until after you've done your first thinning. Short leaf is a little better adapted for fire than, than loblolly is. And one of the reasons for that is, again, like we mentioned earlier, short leaf has a narrower crown, it has shorter needles. And um, when we did the burnout here, I would see, uh, I would actually watch fire kind of climb up the tree and think, okay, we're probably going to lose that one. It's going to top out, meaning the, uh, the, the entire top is just going to go up and we're going to lose that tree. That's part of burning. Um, but 
but I actually watch the fire go up in the tree and then just kind of settle down and, 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 and go back down. And, and we think part of the reason that it was doing that is because um, there's just not as much surface area, not as much uh, needle needles to, to burn as there is lob bolly. Um, one of the advantages of burning, being able to burn early on in, in uh, Stan's uh, life is, is right here. Um, you know, the grass, the blue stem that you see, uh, there's all kinds of different forbs. Um, if you can, the earlier that you can introduce fire into a stand, the, the better your understory is going to be. Obviously, this is great, great habitat for, for wildlife. Um, I'd mentioned RCW. This isn't really RCW habitat, but this is wild turkey habitat, and we do have eastern wild turkey on this forest. Um, so um, our, ne our goal would be to, to probably try and burn this at least one more time uh, before thinning, uh, probably looking into a couple more years uh, before we do that. Uh, one disadvantage, I guess you could say, about shortleaf pine is it does grow slower. I mean, these trees are uh, going on eight years old, and we're probably not looking at a thinning till I would, I would guess, age 15 or 16. Um, whereas, you know, a lot of our lobolly stands were, were starting to be able to, to thin them around 12 or 13 years of age. So, um, however, landowners that we deal with, uh, that we work with, they don't all want timber to be their number one goal. Um, we're, we're, in my short career with the agency, we're seeing a lot of landowners who um, maybe timber's one goal, but they're more interested in the aesthetics or the wildlife or having uh, a mature timber stand to pass on to their, to their kids for recreation. Um, and that's where shortleaf, shortleaf is, is kind of a, a good niche for, for folks like that. Um, one of the other advantages that we're seeing with shortleaf right now is because there's such a big push to conserve the resource and to, and to plant more acres of, of shortleaf out there. Um, cost share assistance for, for the average forest landowner is actually greater for shortleaf than it is for, for lobbolly. So um, shortleaf definitely has its place. I would say if you were a landowner who your number one goal was timber production, um, you, you're going to probably you're going to want to go with lobbolly. Um, but if you're more maybe wildlife oriented or aesthetics, or if you maybe perhaps want to be able to burn more frequently and, and sooner, then shortleaf is the way to go.